Hello and welcome to today's video. I have a really fun one for you today. This is uh, this is quite an inspired video. I hadn't planned to cover this topic, but I'm feeling a bit run down and I just had a humble cup of meat stock and it made me feel like amazing. And I just thought I have to talk about this in today's video. So we're going to be talking about meat stock and I've got some tips for you. So if you have like glutamate sensitivity, if you have histamine intolerance, if you've tried broth, or like bone broth or meat stock or stuff like that, if you've tried gaps and stuff in the past and this hasn't worked for you, I've got a couple of tips for you that might help you to tolerate it. So this is going to be, hopefully we're going to get you doing it if it's something that you know you tolerate and you just kind of fell off the wagon with doing. Also, if you're doing bone broth, meat stock is superior in many ways. And I want to tell you about why that is. So today's going to be a really good video. So if you, if you show up live, let me know and I'll... Uh, answer any questions that you have towards the end. I'd, I'd love to answer your questions. And if you have a question after I've finished, also leave that question and I get back to every single question that I get. So just make sure you tag me and leave me your questions. So probably best place to start is going to be what is the distinction between meat stock and bone broth? And it's, 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 it's pretty simple. In a bone broth, you're using bones. Surprise, surprise. In a meat stock, you're using bones but you're also using other parts of the animal. So this includes things like the feet, um, the skin is a really important part, some muscle tissue, so like um, like chicken breasts, you can imagine, or like some some like meat still on the bone. It's also really important that we have like some cartilage and connective tissue and those kind of things, because there's a lot of healing substances in those as well. So for me, my, my, my favorite way to do this, my favorite way to make a, a meat broth is to use a whole chicken because that way you get all of the bones all of the cartilage all of the ligaments if you like i live in portugal right now i can go to the supermarket and when i buy just the chicken in the supermarket you get the feet that come with it you get the neck that comes with it as well which has got lots of connective tissue in it as well and some small bones you get the organs you get the heart and the liver and they even sometimes give you the ovaries as well so you get all of these organ meats as well and you can just throw all of these in the, in this broth and it makes it even more nutritious. So the best way to extract the nutrients from the meat that we're cooking is to add a little bit of salt and a little bit of vinegar if you're able to tolerate it as well. Obviously, if you've got, I'm going to come to the histamine intolerance and, and um, like glutamate sensitivities and like intolerance problems. I'm going to touch on those towards the end of ways to make this a little bit easier. But for now, I'm just going to talk about the best way to do it, like the absolute best way to get the most benefits if you don't have any sensitivities and intolerances, like myself, and also how to make it taste really good as well. Because if your broth tastes really good, like I just had it with my breakfast. I had, it's kind of like eggy soldiers, you know, like some toast to dip in the runny, the runny egg yolks and a cup of broth on the side. It was just like divine. It was like one of the best breakfasts I've, I've ever had. And maybe you can hear I'm a bit mucusy. I'm a bit ill at the minute. And it just brought so much life into me. And I was like, let's do a video that this is going to be really fun. So best way to do it in my experience is use a whole chicken. And obviously, if you can get higher quality chicken, do. You know, if you can get an organic, if you can get one that's outside eating bugs and it's got a better diet than just being fed grains, then cool. Kind of hard for me to find over here in Portugal. And you don't have to be perfect to heal. So I just use a conventional chicken. Obviously, get one that gets to go outside if you can instead of just one that's in a cage. But... I mean, if that's all you can afford or if that's the situation you're in, like you're still going to get benefits there. It's still, it, you re I really like to emphasize in all of my work that you don't be perfect. You don't have to be perfect to heal. You really don't. And that, that fear of not doing it good enough or that fear of like not doing it perfectly f makes you freeze and not take any action. So even if it's like a conventional chicken, you're still going to get like 80% of the benefits. You're just going to get slightly different ratio of, um, sort of like essential amino acid, uh, essential fats, like the omega-3s, omega-6 ratio will be a bit different. And you might get like a bit of pesticides, a bit of antibiotics. But like, honestly, overall, it's not that big a deal. And I know there's some people that are going to be like, like roast me for saying that. But honestly, like I see people here eating conventional food all of the time. It does happen. You don't have to be perfect. So get your chicken, stick it in a big pot, fill it up with water. And the things you want to add to make it taste really nice, some peppercorns. Don't, don't grind it. Just put the peppercorns in whole. Again, depends how much you're cooking. I like mine a bit peppery. I'm, I, I, I love black pepper. So I put, like, I put like 20, 25. Some salt to taste. You also want to put some bay leaves in there. The bay leaves, 
bay leaves are super interesting, super fascinating. They actually don't have a taste by themselves. Like if you make tea using bay leaves, it just tastes like water. It doesn't have any flavor to it. But there's substances in the bay leaves that, that interact and they, they create different substances when they're exposed to meat. This is why bay leaves are really used with most meat dishes. It, it changes the flavor and it really enhances the flavor. So bay leaves are a really amazing one that you can, um, you can add in there. I think you call it like bay laurel maybe in the United States. They call it laurel over here in Portugal. So like bay leaves, whatever, that, whatever you call that, wherever you're from, stick some of those in there as well. And it makes it just taste a lot better. And vinegar. Vinegar, if you ever have food that doesn't taste good, usually the salt balance is wrong and the acid balance is wrong. So adding vinegar helps from a, from a flavor perspective, you know, some apple cider vinegar in there makes it taste a lot better, but it also helps in making you have a higher quality broth. So the acid will bind with the minerals that are in the, in the bones and in the tissues and it will strip them out. So if you just boil, if you just boil it without an acid in there, you will still get some of these nutrients coming out, but it will be less. The thing about minerals is that the alkaline in nature, they don't move. They're very like stationary. They're like, they're like rocks. They don't, they, they're very metabolically inactive, like very biochemically inactive. They just, they do nothing. So acid is like what moves things around. So if, when we put some acid in there, you can use like lemons as well. If you don't tolerate vinegar and you do tolerate lemons, just any kind of acid will be helpful. I think vinegar definitely tastes the best. It is by far the best. And one, one trick is you want to get, so you get the whole chicken, stick it in there. You've got all of these like spices, the bay leaves, the, the pepper, the salt, the vinegar. You want all of these on the side. You wait for it to start boiling and it will reach a point where as it starts to boil, you get this like, this like foam that starts to build up on the top. You want to skim most of that off. That makes the taste not so good. It will make it a little bit less less appealing. It has kind of like a bitter, acrid kind of taste to it. And it's not as nice. So I would skim that and take the first like two layers of skim off and just, just throw it away. And then you want to add those herbs and spices because they float. So it's really hard to do the skimming because all the peppercorns like float on the top. So th then you add all of those things in. And I'd say ideally, like for best taste, you want to cook this for like six to 10 hours. If you can do it for more, then that's only going to make it taste better. But I like ideally like a minimum six to 10 hours. There, there's the taste from this is just going to be phenomenal. Like if you've tried bone broth before, it can taste kind of not that great. It's just kind of meaty and it's a bit strong. When you have meat broth compared to bone broth, it is delicious. It's like, it's so tasty. It's one of the it's like umami and like the right balance of salty and acidic. And it's just like, it's, it's, it's delicious. You can just, I, I happily can just drink cups and cups of it. And it's, and it's amazing. And I can't do the same with, with um, bone broth. It's just not the same. It doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't taste that good to be honest. So some of the, the benefit, the extra benefits here that you get, instead of just doing a bone broth is you're going to get a lot more of the the sort of the, the proteins and the amino acids that are present in these connective tissues, in the skin and in the, in the muscles. So for example, you're going to get like a lot more collagen, you're going to get more like glutamine and glycine. And these are two really important things because they really help with healing the gut lining. And everyone says like bone broth is really great for your gut. Actually meat stock is even better because it's higher in those substances that really help with healing that gut lining. It's like the collagen, the glutamine, the glycine, there's, that I think they're called glucosaminoglycans. They're like, they're, they're these kind of like mucousy protein-based substances. And they're really like soothing to the gut lining and they literally provide your gut with the, the, the ingredients, like the raw ingredients that it needs to like heal itself, to create itself. And it provides this, this layer of like smooth, like, like you've probably seen on the TV, like those, those adverts for like those, like, proton pump inhibitors or acid reducers and things like that, where there's like those, like the, ab the advert for Gaviscon, where the guy like jumps in the stomach with the fire hose and he's like coating the stomach lining with this like white liquid that cools it. It's like, it does that, but in a, like a non-medical way, it's not suppressing your stomach acid. It's not, it's actually helping the gut lining heal itself. And you're just coating it with this, this, this nice, like really healing, soothing, 
nourishing substance. It's, it's it, honestly, it, it's amazing. It, it really is miraculous. Really helpful for like gastritis, really helpful for just any kind of gut inflammation, gut pain. And, and I mean, when it tastes so good, like honestly, who even cares about the health benefits? I literally would have that broth that I had this morning, again, just because it tasted nice. And if you're doing that, you're gonna stick with it and it's gonna work. So I would say the, the health benefits but the health benefits are better. It tastes better. It's just it's just the best way to do it. It's just fantastic. So now I want to give you some tips. If you have histamine intolerance or glutamate intolerance, or for some reason you've tried broth and it hasn't worked for you, I'm going to try and help you figure out how we can modify this recipe a little bit to make it more tolerable for you. So if you have like oxalate problems, obviously take the peppercorns out. Be careful with the different, like the bay leaves. I don't know about oxalate content of that, but I do know peppercorns high in oxalates. Be, be mindful of that. If you've got like histamine intolerance, vinegar, lemons, they're high in histamine. You're still going to get benefits if you don't put them in. Yes, it's not going to taste as good, but it's better for you to actually have something that you can drink and is helping the gut lining than just not having anything at all. So just avoid those things if, if they don't work for you. If you've tried bone broth and you didn't tolerate it, and you don't know why, just trying the meat stock might change everything for you. So in bone broth, you actually form a lot of free glu glutamic acid, which causes like the same kind of reaction as MSG. If you've got a leaky gut, you've got a leaky brain, this gets in the brain, can cause headaches, can cause this like jittery feeling, this like, uh, 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 this, it feels really weird kind of in your nervous system. That happens when you've got lots of bone and not a lot of meat tissue. It causes a lot of formation of that molecule. When you're cooking bones, but you have meat as well, like you have the skin and you have the feet and you have, you, like honestly, you probably can't get, in most places in the world, you can't get the feet and the, the, the stuff like that. Like you probably can't. So if that's, if that's you then, just getting the whole chicken with skin on, like, like you'd normally buy like a roast chicken, that's fine. If you can get with the feet and the neck and the organs as well, like that's, that, that, that's really cool. Organs, organ tissues can be a bit more of a histamine concern. So if you, again, if you're having intolerance problems, avoid using the organs, just use the whole, the whole chicken as it is. Feet, probably fine. Neck, probably fine. Organs, I, I wouldn't use. I would avoid them for now until we find something that you tolerate. So I would, um, I would, I would use, I would use as, as little in it as possible. So it literally would be looking just like chicken, water, salt. That's what I would start with. And I would also change the cook time. Bring it down to like two hours. This is, this is gonna reduce the amount of histamine formation. This is gonna reduce the amount of glutamate, glutamic acid, all of these, all of these other biological amines that you could have reactions to. They, they basically get increased with cook time. So bring that cook time down to like two hours and, and then see if you tolerate it. As soon as you make a batch, freeze it, keep histamine levels low. See how you do with that. If you do okay with that, Try and experiment with these other variables. Try with some peppercorns, see how that works. Try with some apple cider vinegar, see if that works. Try with the, the, the bay laurel, the, the bay leaves, see if that works. Play with it and see what happens. If, if you try that and it still doesn't work, there's still a level deeper we can go. You can try pressure cooking. Pressure cooking can make a difference for some people. I find that for some people pressure cooking, because you can cook it in a short period of time. So instead of cooking it for two hours, you can just cook it for like 40 minutes and you actually get quite a decent meat stock out of that and you can tolerate it okay. Some people pressure cook and that causes them more problems. Again, it's gonna depend on your individual sensitivities and what it is that you have problems with. So it's just another avenue to try if you have tried reducing the cook time, you've tried avoiding these things and it's still gonna work. And finally, I'll leave you with this. If you can't tolerate broth, if you can't do meat stock, you can't do broth or anything, you can still heal. So for, the, for a long period in my healing journey, I, I was on five foods, I couldn't, I was like trying to do the gaps diet. I couldn't do the bone broth. I couldn't do the meat stock. Couldn't do any of it. And the book says, and like everybody says, like if you don't take the broth, you can't heal your gut lining, and it's going to stay leaky. And then if you don't heal your gut, you can't heal everything else, and then you're going to stay sick forever. I, I promise you, if you can't do it, you can still heal. Like you don't need it. It can just be a really helpful tool. So if it's not right for you right now, you can still heal. You just have to try some other things. And if you're feeling really stuck as I always suggest, reach out to somebody, reach out to me, I'll try and help you figure it out. But you don't need to do everything that everybody in the internet is saying to, to heal. You don't have to be perfect. And if something doesn't work for you, then don't do it. If I'd have persisted with doing broth when it didn't work for me, it not only would it have made me 
more ill, it probably would have stopped me being able to heal because it just, just didn't work for me at that time. So don't try and push it just because I'm saying that this is a good thing. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you, and that's fine. There'll be something else that does work for you instead. So I'm going to take some questions now from the chat. So if anyone has any more questions, make sure you fire, fire them along, and I'm going to start from the top. So Don, nice to see you, Don. Really nice to see you on it. He says, how do you prevent the water from completely evaporating when you cook for six to 10 hours? So if the water's evaporating and you're cooking it that long, your temperature's too high. This is also another thing that can that can help with reducing the formation of like the these these biological amines is reduce that cooking temperature. Honestly, you don't even need to have it boiling. If you have it on a low simmer, or even if it's just hot, you know, like if it's hot enough that you think that you could put your finger in there and it would burn your finger, it's still cooking, even if it's not boiling. Keeping it at a lower temperature will reduce that evaporation from happening. I'd always add like an extra one or two cups just so you have like the wiggle room, but I've, I've left broth cooking overnight several times. And if you're cooking, and if on your, in your stove, you've got it down on like a one, it probably won't even be boiling. You might get like a little, little bubble here or there, but you, you probably just open the lid and you'll see steam coming out. It's still cooking at that temperature. It doesn't need to be boiling and actually keeping it lower could reduce the formation of these other things. So if you're, if you're finding it's completely evaporating in just as little as six to 10 hours, the temperature's definitely too high. Bring it down a little bit. Andre here says, what supplements do you recommend as chelators for oxalates until you stop the endogenous production? Bit of an off topic question, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll play with it. So it's, it's really your gut flora. Your gut flora is really important here. We want to in improve the integrity of your mucosal lining. So obviously we, we just talked about a really good way to do that. If you reduce absorption, every molecule of oxalate you don't absorb is one less molecule of oxalate that you don't have to remove. Inside your body, you really have to work on the mineral balance. People that have uh, oxalate problems usually have sulfur deficiency, sulfur imbalance problems. You've got problems with your sulfur metabolism and electrolytes are usually imbalanced too, especially if you're like getting like the kidney stone side effects of oxalates, that can, that can really suck. It's usually a, a mineral balance problem. Not just the main electrolytes, it can also be trace minerals as well. Molybdenum, chromium, vanadium, those are the little ones. So you just have to be mindful of those things too. Again, bone broth, meat stock, a really good way to get those things in if you can, if you can tolerate them. Um, binding them in the gut. I, I would say, honestly, if you really have that many problems with oxalates in the short term, don't eat them. And I, I'm, I would say like, I'm like the king of like non-restrictive diets. You know, I, I'm always saying like, don't restrict your diet if you don't need to. If you really have problems with a certain food molecule, then don't eat it or avoid, minimize it as much as possible. So when I had histamine intolerance, Eating histamine was just didn't make any sense, and and I couldn't do it. And I, I would suggest that if you do have problems like this, avoid it as much as you can. Work on improving that gut lining. Work on the mineral balance. Work on restoring the microflora balance into the gut. Then you'll restore all of your like lactobacillus, your bifidobacterium, your oxalobacter, all these organisms that break the oxalate down for you. Hi Karen, nice to see you. Uh, who taught me to cook? Uh, my chronic health problem taught me to cook. <laughs> kind of put a gun to my head and said, learn how to cook, otherwise you're going to die. So yeah, kind of kind of figured that out the hard way. Um, really nice book, um, The Gaps Diet by Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride. She's got a bunch of recipes in there, talks you through lots of different stuff. Uh, nice to see you here as well, Ad Edward. Uh, fantastic information. I really appreciate that. Cool. So that's all the questions. I hope you found it really helpful. And you don't have to be like sick to get the benefits of using broth. You know, you can use, you can use this just if you get a cold, you can use this just on a daily basis, just because it tastes good. You know, I had it with my breakfast today. Yeah, I'm feeling a bit rough. It did make me feel a lot better. I absolutely loved it. Like, I would take a cup of broth over like a cup of tea any day. And I'm British, you know, so it was really, really good broth. <laughs> really, really was absolutely amazing. Hope you found it really helpful. If you do have any more questions, please let me know and I'll get back to you. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.